everything I do is involved in relationships. And relationship doesn't have to mean I want to make out with you. It might mean that I just want to be your good friend. It might mean that I have stuff I want you to do. That's the agenda for the day. Um, can you all read that? Okay, good. Uh, you didn't know you were getting tested, right? I'm watching you. So, this is an important point in presenting. Slide decks take away from you. Why? Because we are a nation of television viewers. Sorry, it's the way it is. We watch TV. If I put something for you to watch, you will watch it. Not me. Who's the most important person in the room besides all of you? Me! Because I'm the one who wants your attention. That's my big, big point in presenting in general. Where do you think I'll give you a hint. Me! <laughs> me! Because I want to convey information to you. Are you all with me so far? Boy, I'm going to switch back to that agenda a lot because I don't remember what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. I'm joking. Something really fun to do in any kind of presentation is be clever as best you can. I'm going to laugh. They're not even going to know why. That's, the, that's my favorite kind of thing to do. Because... If you're invested and engaged in the conversation early, if you're, if you're kind of digging the thing already early on the back, that's going to work out for you. That's going to keep people going. People who think you're in the room to watch them have already failed the test. I'm in the room to keep your attention. That's what I'm here to do. My goal is to keep you from checking your email and chatting and Twitter. So, it's not about being super clever. You don't have to be an amazing artist. It's just about making people feel that they're engaged, and also making sure you're delivering something back for them. My goal in this presentation is simply to say that you have values that you want to deliver back and forth to the people. You know what works great on a, on a presentation? Big pictures. Are there any professional photographers in the room? Oh, why well, yes. More than I actually thought. Um, <laughs> pictures. I'm a really bad photographer. I just, you know, this is Seattle. I was there last week. Here's me walking down the street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, clever. Um, so, pictures. We did, pictures are so vital to presentation. Please don't use the templates that come with any presentation. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, I don't think I even need to talk to this slide. If you just accept the fact that PowerPoint is not Microsoft Word, we're all doing Um Don't preach to your audience. Make a relationship. Make people friends. That's a preacher. That's my friend John Swanson. Um, he's in Portland, Indiana. He preaches to people. That's what he does. But he's good at it. That's why he's not the job. Don't preach to people. Communicate with them. Try to build a relationship with them. Give your ideas handles. What does that mean? Has anyone yet, at this very point, have you already figured out something you could take away to do for a presentation? Do you understand that everything I've done is to build, to give you something to take away? It's not to show you I'm clever. I feel like I'm clever whether or not you're in the room. I think I'm wicked smart. You come from Boston, I'm wicked smart. <laughs> but give your ideas handles. Give something that people can take and then do in their next presentation. I beg you for your next presentation to think about doing some of these things. I'm almost at the end of my day. Oh yeah, I am. Are you watching me or are you watching my slide show? So, who's online? I don't remember what they said that person did. I want to show you some presentations. I did this the other day on my blog just so I can make sure. Uh, what's the, uh, how do I do it? Anybody actually listen to Norm? Yeah. Um, yeah. You have to never find the network. He said you have an asshole. It's like magic. Oh, that. Windows. Oh, that. Oh, oh, other. Oh, okay. Other. Yeah, other. yeah, you guys keep it up. Other. 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 Network name. AI. 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 Wireless. One word. Yep. Wireless security. Did you say? Yeah. Uh, I think it's WP password, but it's not the wrong people. All right. You guys are awesome. I forgot through this. Don't see one. 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 Don't see
really like that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
teeny, teeny, and you're going to cry. You know, you're, at, you're at the colon and you're ready to leave the room. Uh, I always assume the audience is smart. There's two things that will happen. If the person, I mean, if you blow way over their head, you're going to know because the eyes glaze, they start to fall asleep, they do this funny thing. You know, the thing is, presenters can see their audience. And if you don't spend the time looking at your audience because you're shy, you're invisible. I mean, it's like a magical power up here. If you, if you work it really well, you're kind of invisible. It's not that you guys see me. You're trying to suck in this information and figure out if there's something you can use. Everybody at a presentation is trying to figure out what they can use in the presentation, not what the person's saying. I was at Gnome Dex. This is the Gnome Dex shirt from a couple weeks ago. And there was a, there was a guy just rapid firing information at us. And we're just sitting there, uh, uh, you know, and it worked great, except that we all left the room. No idea what he said for a while. Dude, smart. And you know, we're like writing notes and pets and stuff on Twitter and trying to figure out what he said. Uh, it was way better than the opposite. It was way better than certain presentations I've been to where they're like, so when you use your cell phone, you should take the power and, you know, and you're like, I'm going to die. So always try to talk higher than the crowd. What else? What other questions? What thoughts? You can shake this up. Hi. Hello. Um, I'm reading your name, but I always use the McCloud. You, you cast stickered yourself. I like that. Um, <laughs> what about, do you have any good uh, techniques or strategies for dealing with a person with a really long war story that never shuts the fuck up? Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. So, um, the, the way I, t I mean, yeah, there's, there's always that person who wants to tell you their thing when you kind of go into the, you, you want to ask someone for their opinion in the audience or whatever, that's where you're going. Yeah. So, sometimes you can prompt. You could say, I really have time for a real short question here, and, and you do the hand thing, because, you know, I have time for a really short question here. Sometimes that doesn't go past. What I, what I, you know how I got better at that was I started listening to talk radio a lot, because a real good talk radio host wipes you right off the phone awful quick. And I used to get mad at Christopher Lively, uh, who was in Boston for a really long time. And he'd wipe people off the phone when they're in a little bit of an awesome conversation, and he'd have to be like, well, yes, and then I invented the sun, and then I, oh, that's great, okay, let's go to, let's go to John in Medford, and John be like, hi, 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 can you hear me? Hello? First time caller. You know, and it's just the worst thing in the world. So, that's how I do it. I, I, I visually prompt, that's my sort of favorite thing to do. This, by the way, is the visual prompt for don't ask that here. Hi. Mm -hmm. uh, I was thinking another, another way is if you can control the mic. You are holding the mic out of the audience if you're doing the whole sort of Bill Donahue Oprah thing and walking out among the people, or you have a partner who's doing that for you, and then you can walk out and you can't control the mic. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
By golly, he has to have practiced that. Oh, sure. But memorize it, or else he's staring at his own slides as he's talking. Wait, so do you practice your presentation, or do you use it just kind of as a memory jogger? Or kind of, how do you use your slides? How do I use my slides? So, I tend to I tend to use a little a, a mix of both. I, I don't practice a lot, but I'm really good at improv. I'm really bad at memorizing things. So if I went through this deck, all I knew is I wanted to show you a slide like that. I wanted to make you giggle. I wanted to make you look at me. I wanted to reinforce the point a little bit, and then I wanted to show you that clever is funny. Michael was clever, remember? Um, <laughs> I wanted to talk about value. I wanted to show you pictures. You know, so all I all I knew is I knew roughly where I was going. Now, obviously, the, the, the content depth of that slide set isn't all that much. Um, if you were presenting on how to video blog and you wanted to show people a whole bunch of, here's my gear and here's what I do and here's what I plug in, I, I find that the more that they're watching the screen for that, the, the less they're going to be watching you for that. And, I can, and heck, if you're doing how to video blog, you might as well bring the tools with you. If you're presenting to a really big room, Dave Frank at TED did a great job of presenting in a, in a room. Uh, I love that a lot of you guys are kind of nodding. It means there's like, you know, presentation junkies like me. Dave um, Frank started by reading the Nigerian spam email to people. I, I couldn't have laughed more. Uh, you know, but he had me by the, the clever right there early on. That's the thing, too. You can always determine if I'm lying. By going and watching a bunch of slideshows, you can say, huh. That guy presented like that. All right, Chris got a hand there. And then you'll figure out something I forgot to tell you that's much more important, and then hopefully you'll educate me. So that's you know, what we do here. Questions, problems? What's the W in the middle? It was the uh, icons for the different subjects. But the people forget about the title. Have you heard of the I Kawasaki's 5, 10, 15, or something? Like it's 80, 20? Yeah. Oh, it's not 20, 30, yeah. 10, 20, 30. I have heard it. Um, I was going to stick that on that deck. And it's like, actually, in the comments at chrisbroga.com, someone actually put a link to it, the 10, 20, 30. I haven't used it very much. Um, I presented as well at Gnome Next, and the only fault I had there is we had all kind of heard that presentation a bunch of times. He sort of he brought out the, a lot of the same old stuff from the, the art of the start. But he's an enthusiastic guy. I saw him in 1984 presenting about uh, the first match uh, down at the uh, MIT when I was a little older than Piper, but uh, <laughs> oh, okay. what's the gist of it? I, I couldn't repeat it very well. Do you want to? 10 slides, 20 minutes, 30 slides on, something like that? I think that would be, that's pretty no more than, no more than 10 words on the slide or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, it's like that. It's a good bit of math to work on. As you can see, I, I you know, very small font, lots of words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's why I did it. Design can be jarring, right? Where the artists can do. Mark? Uh, I have a question. Uh, no, I, I have a comment more that I love. I love the uh, sentence. Presentation is a conversation that sounds like it's one sided. Okay. Uh, what goes in your head that, that make this not like what you remember your math teacher doing it? What's, what's going on in your head? Oh, boy, that's fantastic. And do you take anything away from it? Thinking of a, there's a Simpsons episode where uh, uh, I don't remember Bart saying it to Homer, Homer saying to Bart, he's saying, you know, I know you you, you you know what I'm thinking right now. And okay. they switch to him and he's going, meow, 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 meow. <laughs> meow. Um, <coughs> what goes on in my head when I'm in a presentation is I tend to look at the crowd over a lot. And I'm watching eyeballs and I'm looking to see who's kind of looking bored or whatever. I'm looking to see who's kind of nodding with me. Because if they're nodding with me, then I get excited when I do something. And if they're not, then I go, dance, dance, my <laughs> <laughs> And that's how I present. So I'm, I'm you know, fitfully aware of where the deck is. I just don't, you know, I, I'm not a memorizer. I have a real bad, I'm, I can't remember song lyrics to save me. Songs I've loved all my life, I can tell you once. That's why I do improv. Hi, Tom. Hi. Um, I was just going to mention, we were talking about the slides earlier. Um, Right. Uh, <laughs> 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 
You know, because a lot of people, you're going to probably say that a lot of people consider their slide deck their handout material, and that's not really true. Should you be considering putting on handout material, which I don't like to do, which is why I blog it, um, you can, and sorry, now, you can, and that's another way to learn how to beat your arms, is to be very aware of them. You, you, can, you can make a PowerPoint or a PDF or something that you want to give them this presentation. Obviously, I present on black a lot. I like black. Mm -hmm. um, the, the negative to that is obviously if you print that, you know, your family's going to hate you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, this could have been random, I guess, but I was kind of talking about the notion of clever. And what I, what I do when I design my slide decks, and I, I consider it design. I, I'm a really bad designer. I've never gone to art school, except for when I'm at pod camp. Um, <laughs> I, I consider my design to be silly, but what I like to do is I like to jar your head. If you look at a lot of people's slide decks, and you look at that slide, it's off center, it's a big giant knee. So if I stand here, I've done a good job. <laughs> We're used to seeing this architecture of slide decks where there's a title up here and there's a company from here and it says, this is you know, not for, don't, for God's sake, don't tell me when you were here. Uh, and then five, 10, 25 bullets, or you know, like a menu. You know, there's always that time in a room when you're watching somebody's slide deck and it looks like a menu and you want to die. Mm -hmm. Just like, ah, I can't suck in all that info. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyone else? Any other interesting thoughts? Do you think slide decks have evolved any? Have they evolved any? I, sure. You said I just thought people would consider it a, a handout. Do you think you started as a handout? Like back in the mid 90s and then it evolved more design thing now? I think people who do it well do that. I, I think that you know a lot of people still remember the overheads. You know, in your biology class, and you're looking at <laughs> cells, and you go, cells. Um, the biology class exists to you know prove that you shouldn't be a scientist. That's really that's the that's that fork. And uh, did you hey, everybody read the dip? Seth Godin's book, the dip. If you get past the depressing part of the book, the dip. It's a, it's a really interesting story because it basically says that there's a whole lot of things built into society to say that you should either go forward or not see I didn't um, you should either go forward or not go forward at this point. You know, not everybody's gonna be a superstar. This is your this is the offer for that and you should go do this instead. Hi Alex. Hi. Hey actually uh, I'm glad you said hi Alex because I was just thinking of a, a branching point. I had an a job interview about a week ago. Congratulations. And they said we'll take a pass on him because he talks too much. Uh Dang, I need to get him talking. My favorite podcast is a great place to talking. Talking is a great thing. Yeah. Conversing is a great thing. Communicating versus presenting is a great thing. Uh, the fact that I'm up here, let's all get up here. You know, I was at a concert once, the Mighty Mighty Boss Cubs, for those who want to know. And at one point, Dickie Barrett really ticked off the entire crowd. Uh, sorry, not the crowd. The entire security team. He goes, hey, everybody, come on up! And we were all on stage. <laughs> I thought for sure we were all going to die. Because the stage is bowing. <laughs> you know, and the boss comes dudes, like, you know the dancers? They don't do anything but dance with guys. They didn't stop doing that with 300 extra people on the stage. You're all getting elbowed in the head. So it was a good thing, you know, it was nighttime and there were beverages involved. <laughs> <laughs> did you have your hand or did you wait with me? Oh, you did. I'm sorry. How do you break through the expectations that you're going to have the company logo, that you're going to have the company confidential, that you're not going to be, uh, that you're going to be boring, and that it's going to be available at the end of? Um, I have a sort of Nike approach to that. I, <laughs> I so so back when I was being paid by a company that you know wanted me to go to other companies and talk to people about what I knew how to do, and I'd be in front of Sun or Intel or some of those companies or or uh, wireless companies, which. Uh, Boy, Telco, there's nothing like a bunch of stodgy Telco dudes. Hello, Lennox. Um, I would, um, I would always kill those slides. I would always kill the deck. And, and now, there are big corporations that have insane legal requirements. I would write it in that point font and put it all on one slide. I'd go, this is all the stuff that should be on all the slides. This is my logo. This is all the legal programs. Don't tell anybody about this show. And I hit the next slide, and every other slide would look like the rest. Uh, we do a lot of things in life because we think that there are boundaries that are just not really there. You could ultimately drive on the other side of the road out there should you choose. You just have to weigh the considerations of what happens when you do that. <laughs> there are things in our life that we all do. We're almost all sitting in chairs except for sword. I love sitting on the floor in meetings, uh, big office meetings. I've done it a bunch of times and there's nothing weirder than a bunch of guys with 
<laughs> so I just break that boundary. I don't. There are times to be very reverent. I'm very reverent in funerals. Um, sometimes not really. No. Uh, there, are, uh, I think funerals are fun uh, if you if you love the person. But there there are times to be reverent. And there's times to sort of go along with the protocol. Uh, there's a lot of times where the protocol is just there because we had nothing better to do. Thomas. Uh, difference between presenting to an audience of 40 or 50 and an audience of 400, 500. Do you do anything different for your audience size? <laughs> you know, I, I didn't get into either. See, because I was doing hacks, I didn't really get into a lot of the basics. I mean, uh, you know, hang on, on. But I would say that one thing is everyone speaks too fast. I speak very fast for a presenter. You're supposed to make sure every word is a single separate word. That's why the people, politicians, talk like this. And they talk to something because it sounds good when you say you're going to do something. And it sounds like so meaningful when they do that. Always emote, always, you know, if you have several hundred people, I make connection with about five or six rows. I try real hard to look in the back. Occasionally I'll just stop and wait. Because, again, we're a television nation. We're used to thinking that this is just a screen. And so I break that fourth wall as much as I can. And a few times at conferences with really good Wi Fi, I've gone for a little run down the aisles, but it doesn't work out the way you think it is. You know, in your head, you're like part of Van Halen or something. You What's really happening is you're losing three dozen people at the time going, the guy speaking less. I'll just watch his slide. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, really, there's like uh, 12 minutes or so to the I don't, math is hard. <laughs> I'll, I'll end on Vincent and we'll, we'll get out of here. Um, what if you have no people in front of you? I do a lot of that uh, presenting for an audience I don't see. I just Hopefully with a camera, right? <laughs> 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 For a minute, I just had a thought he had a room going. And what I think is... <laughs> <laughs> uh, when it's all people in an industry, and it's... it's Tony Khan from WGBH has uh, 30 plus years of experience of doing radio. And his response to doing this is he always thinks about that he's looking into the eyes of somebody that he loves very dearly. And he uses the voice of what you would say to someone that you wanted to communicate this information to of someone you love very dearly. Now, obviously, you have to look into the little circle of the lens, but you look into the lens and you think about, I am doing my hardest to crawl through this lens and make a relationship with somebody on that other side. Now, I'm not saying that like huggy feely, I love you, try to kiss them. I'm saying it like, even if you're talking to the aerospace industry, they're looking at you as the conduit for the information you're presenting to them, so they want that relationship with you. The other thing is always don't forget to be human. You know, I love websites that belong to one person that say we. I love websites that talk all those is such a such a you know the, the farthest I go on that is I sometimes write about myself in the third person because it looks nicer when you read the bio. But other than that, you know, in presenting be you. Uh, this is a strange fact. I came across this fact the other day. It turns out that companies, almost all the companies out there, still have people in them. Turns out there's humans in <laughs> And we can still talk to them. That the people are what do the transacting. And then at the end of the day, when they're out of their business clothes, there's still people too. Take your clothes off. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Be human. So that's all I get. Thank you so much for your time and you know, we should, you know, get soda pop and coffee or whatever <coughs> get out of here. Thank you, Piper. I'm really sorry to say thank you. If you guys can't find me on the internet, you're doing a bad job. <laughs> <laughs> you're adding a